Moses Barrett the third, aka Petey Pablo, born July 22, 1973. Back in 2001, you couldn't turn on the radio or music channel and not hear Petey Pablo's song Raise Up. This was a top 25 song in the country according to Billboard and the number one rap song on the same charts. Petey Pablo was on fire that year, going into his debut album released in November. What made Petey so special was he was familiar but different all at the same time. Back in the early to mid 2000s, the South had taken over hip hop on a mainstream level, so Petey's cadence, country sound and lyrics resonated with what was popular, giving him an already primed audience for him to slide comfortably in the driver's seat of the next Southern act to blow up in hip hop. What made him rare was he was from a place no one really heard about up to that point when you talk about rap music. There wasn't a popular rapper that North Carolina could claim, so Petey came right on time. Not to take anything away from his talent because Petey Pablo knew how to make a hit song. His debut album was even recognized as one of the best albums in the country, nominated for a Grammy in 2003. He'd prove he wasn't a one-hit wonder later that year after releasing freak -a leak produced by on-fire producer Lil Jon that was tailor-made for the club. To this day, you could find a club or bar somewhere still warming up the crowd to that song. Once again, Petey's magic of relating to the times came in handy and produced the biggest song of his catalog. It was his first top 10 Billboard song peaking at number 7 and is his highest earning single to date, officially going platinum. And who can forget 2004, the year Petey Pablo released his second goal album in a row and featured on a number one song for the first time with the upcoming singer Ciara. And to think none of this was even expected to happen. Petey Pablo since a young age had issues with the law and made mistakes that jeopardized his future greatly but let him tell it, all those transgressions and setbacks were opportunities he used to perfect parts of his craft, from writing to even performing while in prison for over 300 inmates. Those inmates gave Petey the confidence and assurance that he could actually do something with rap music. Upon his release in the late 90s, Petey was on a fast track to fame and fortune, linking with legendary rappers and producers, all because, as he says, he didn't wait for opportunity to visit him. He went and knocked on opportunity's door, and fortunately, it answered. Petey Pablo no longer had to rob for survival or sleep on anyone's couch. He was in the game, but it wouldn't last very long. Petey Pablo had a unique avenue in hip-hop before it was ever cool, or should I say cold, to represent North Carolina and could have been a star for years to come if not for these reasons. Let's talk about it. Salute to Reinvented Wheel on IG for this request. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth Music. I should get it, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Petey Pablo is a rapper, actor, and record producer from Greenville, North Carolina that knew at an early age he wanted to become a rapper. Aware of the rules to the game, Pablo decided to branch outside the river and small fish to catch a shark in the ocean as he puts it when describing his desire to leave Carolina and live in New York City. As you may have thought, things wasn't easy in New York as he had to live on a friend's couch and sweep slash wash the dishes or make store runs to help out. But he was where he needed to be and began making industry friends like Busta Rhymes and Black Rob. One night he went to a club with them and for a minute became lost. He ends up in a bathroom and as soon as he entered, Rob approached him like yo kick a freestyle. While he's doing so, Chris Lighty A&R for Jive Records walks in and is amazed by what he's seeing. Pablo is offered a record deal with Jive and the rest was history. Stunt number 1. Incarcerated First Entry what else is unique about Petey Pablo is he had an unusual late start in music. He was 28 years old when he first released the song Raise Up, his official debut. This late start can be attributed to a five-year prison sentence he'd do from 93 to 98 for armed burglary, the entire golden era of hip-hop and his prime. Missed for what would amount to money he probably can't remember what he did with. 
People say everything happens for a reason and at the right time, but personally, I think the perfect time could come sooner all the same, and we use those sayings as a crutch or pacifier to why things didn't work out. Petey says his entire album were songs he had for his demo early in the decade, with only three Timbaland tracks added to it. That album went gold and almost won a Grammy. With Petey's hustle and talent, I do believe had he not went to prison the first time, he would have gotten on much sooner. After all, everyone in the prison were telling him he had what it took to become a huge rap star based on the performances he would put on every week while incarcerated. I guess the five years did add some polish to him because when he released Raise Up, a North Carolina anthem, and one of the biggest My City anthems of all time, he hit the ground running and says he became a millionaire in just a year after his release from prison. Imagine what could have been had he focused solely on the music five years sooner. According to him, it was all about survival around the time he went to jail for burglary and going without was not an option. It cost him five years of his youth, five years missed on one of the hottest eras in hip-hop where any and everybody with talent seemed to have a chance. He ended up figuring it out after being released and made something of himself so all wasn't so bad. He learned a costly lesson and it lined up his path to cross with an A&R in a bathroom and changed his life. Stunt number two, four million to jive. Jive Records in 2003 were in no way in need for top-selling artists. They were one of the hottest labels in the game regardless of genre at the time, so weren't press losing a goal-selling rapper with no insurance he could produce the same results once again. In a shock, Jive actually approached PD and informed him his third album would cost a fee of $4 million, supposedly to recoup from the first album and for promotion and machine rollout for his third. This was an eye-opener for PD, who began looking into the finances and understanding how much unnecessary money was being spent on things like studio time, engineering work, paying for industry producers and more. Petey felt slighted by the new terms and attempted to negotiate, offering to use his own home studio, his own engineering, and finding local producers to make his third album, but the label declined. This is when the lengthy hiatus came from 2004 to 2007. Album 2 did come out and went gold, same as his debut with the hit song Freakalik. This track showed PD was still very much in his prime and Jive could have extended that prime much longer than just two major label albums. For three years he battled with the label to be released from his contract and they finally did. But not to PD's fortune. After leaving Jive, his 2007 album made little to no noise, serving as one of the final times PD Pablo was seen in the decade. He'd release again in 2018, but by then, his career potential had long faded, all because he and the label couldn't get on the same page. His prime was stolen once again. Stunt number two, incarcerated second entry. As if the worst wasn't already behind Petey Pablo. In September 2010, he would face the law once again. This time, he was caught in an airport attempting to carry a stolen semi-automatic pistol onto his flight to LA. Two weeks later, he was sentenced to 35 months in prison for the nonsensical violation to which he served nearly three years, returning home March 2014. He actually released a mixtape while incarcerated called California No. 1, which received little notoriety or moved any needle in his favor. In 2014, he released another mixtape soon after being released, but no album would drop for Petey Pablo until four years later in 2018, when by then he was completely old news. He still made relatable songs, but to a niche market not large enough to call it a comeback. He has a YouTube channel where for a while he was doing skits and vlogging his adventures, building chairs, wooden fences, and seems to be at peace with where life is now for him. All in all, Petey Pablo, for the short career he's had on paper, was able to make a name for himself after the hardship of going to prison for an extended time and stamped North Carolina on the map in rap music. 
For a while, he was the only inspiration until J. Cole came along. But the early 2000s will always remember how lit Petey Pablo had things when he was in his zone. Too bad incarceration and label issues didn't allow him to showcase more. Salute, much respect, but for these reasons, his growth was stunning. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth Music, and I'm out.